Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. Before we dive in, we are live. The brand new Good Company Collection is live right now. 3SB.co, goodcompanyapparel.com. Copy ours now, man. We've got full sweatsuits, my favorite sweatshorts to date. Five inch inseam, thick, heavy, high quality cotton, hoodies, sweatpants, and more. Check them out, 3SB.co. Everything we sell is small batch, so once it's gone, no restocks. Grab your size now, I guarantee it's gonna sell out. Today we're talking about how to build that deadlift you want. You want to pull 500, let's get you to six. You pull six, let's get you to seven. We're talking about variations and accessories. After this, you'll know exactly what to do to build a big deadlift. Now when we're talking about any lifts, I like to break things down into variations, which are things most similar and specific to what we're trying to improve, in this case, the deadlift. Then we talk about accessories, which build muscle and build strength on all the auxiliary pieces that will grow over time. Variations, are going to solve a skill issue, maybe a coordination issue, or allow us a ways to progress in the lift that we can program to control fatigue better. Accessories, I think about more bodybuilding. I'm building my lats, I'm building my arms, I'm building whatever it is for the big picture, months, years, decades worth to put on that muscle that will help the lift in the long term. So first, we're gonna dive into some of my favorite variations that allow us to build the deadlift in a better, more efficient manner. If you're a conventional puller, I think some of the greatest things you can do are build your hamstrings. RDLs is one of the greatest variations. It obviously just limits the amount of knee flexion, which is obviously what emphasizes our quads. Um, so slightly less knee flexion, hips a little bit higher, really builds up your glutes and hands. A pause deadlift, where we're pausing just off of the ground, under control, really bracing, holding that bar close to our body, not only allows us to handle or forces us to use less load, which manages fatigue over time, we can't max deadlift every single session, but also forces that really good bar path and keeping tight Keeping that body close, or the bar close to your body. Conventional and sumo, great. If you're a sumo puller, some of my favorites are something like a conventional. Both RDL, you can RDL sumo stance and conventional stance, and just the conventional itself, which puts a little bit more emphasis on the hammies and low back than maybe a sumo pole does. Again, in the off season or the big picture of programming, we're just trying to do mini waves of progression. If you're just doing sets of five forever on the same lift, it's gonna be very difficult to handle more volume or more weight over time. So we'll create different waves of these variations that slowly allow us to chip on each other and progress baby steps over baby steps. You hear a lot of things about no sleeves or beltless training, both in the squat and the deadlift. And I think that's a great tool to utilize. What it does, again, is forces you to use less weight. So if we're deadlifting or squatting, this variation works for both, twice a week, three times a week, whatever it may be, Having one that's a competition style, meaning the lift you're strongest with, with all the equipment you're gonna to use to compete or pull a rep, one rep max, whether your goal is to compete or not. The other days could be beltless, tempo, paused, things that force us to use less overall load on the bar. The RPE or what we perceive is difficult will still be very, very high and we'll still be working really hard, but the overall load still matters in the fatigue on our system and in the individualized, localized fatigue of the muscle itself. So again, when I think about these movements, I think about the variations being within a block, within a wave that can maybe help now. If that bar is floating away from you, we can do a tempo or a pause and really focus on that, almost like a drill in another sport, keeping that bar close to you, proper bar path, proper lock out of your knees and hips. When I'm thinking about accessories, I'm thinking more broad umbrella. I'm thinking months, years, decades to build the muscles that then can potentially be stronger to lift more weight. I know we mentioned RDL, um, but any kind of stiff leg, RDL, uh, combo, reverse hyper, GHR, anything that really targets the crap out of your hamstrings and glutes, we need to take it close to failure, one, two, three reps from failure. We need to hammer our nutrition and our sleep. Building up your glutes and hams takes time, but RDLs, leg curls, and any kind of GHR or reverse hyper are great. Moving on next, talking the booty. Booty's very similar, but you can do things like hip thrusts. Great, great movement to build hypertrophy in the glutes, in the hams, that may transfer long term. Again, sets for anywhere from five to 12, loading it up heavy, getting close to failure. Moving up the body, we're talking about low back. Often gets a lot of work from the deadlift itself and those other accessories I talked about, but nothing hurts with a little back extension, loaded, kettlebell swings, tons of different movements we can load up the back. Working our way up even more. We're talking lats, upper back, rhomboids, et cetera. The basics, man, they've worked forever and they're gonna work again. I prefer a chest supported row, because if I'm handling a month, enough volume that I'm progressing, as you get more to the advanced stage of your deadlift, there's so much work to be done with the deadlift, I wanna save my low back on my accessories and save it for my next deadlift session. So a chest supported row, a pull down, uh, uh, close grip and wide grip, 
a row that uh, emphasizes the lats, which means we're going a little bit more close grip or at least elbows down and pulling that elbow into our hip. And then we're gonna do one that's more for our upper back where we're gonna flare our elbows a little bit more and try to squeeze our upper back. Vertical pull, horizontal pull, elbows in, elbows out on both. Basically will hit anything you need on your upper back and should get it done. And that's something, you know, it's a slightly smaller muscle and you're using less weight than something like a squat and a deadlift. It's probably something we could do two, three, four times a week. You, if you're doing full body, you can sprinkle it in at the end of each session. If you break your accessories up more towards lift, then just hammer them, get two or three good exercises, two or three good sets at the end of your deadlift day. So building both deadlifts, yes, have a lot to do with your posterior chain, right? Back, glutes, hams. But the slight difference is the sumo, a little bit depends on your morphology, your leverages, how you're built, but vast majority of sumo pullers, your quads are getting a little bit more work than the conventional. So a lot of the stuff that applies to a squat may apply to your sumo deadlifters. And I found the most success with myself and the thousands of athletes I've coached over the last 15 years, building up your quads majorly for something like the sumo. Bulgarian split squats, paused high bar close stance squats, bunch of reps, belt squats, lunges, all these things to really build up your legs long term can be very efficient in slamming through uh, the, the all ranges of motion of the sumo deadlift. Last piece is your core, which obviously is highly involved in all lifts. You want to be as rigid and as strong as we can here, almost anti-flexion. We want to not bend. We want to be tight from our shoulder to our hips. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into core training, one, to look good for aesthetics, and two, to be more functional both in powerlifting and in sport in our upcoming video. So. Be sure to subscribe, man. New video every single Monday. We got shorts every other day. If you guys can share those, any likes help a lot. Be sure to subscribe. I see 50% of y'all not subscribed, and that hurts my soul. I'll catch you in the next video, man. 3sb.co for all your clothing needs. Third Street Barbell, Sacramento, California. Solid Mike, man. I'm out.